Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, welcome everyone. Um, I've never done this before, so we're just gonna keep it low key casual and have fun. Um, what kind of inspired this was I posted on my Instagram story, Beyond the Black Line. Do you guys wanna hear from badass marathon um, female swimmers? And everyone was like, yes. So this is, this is that. Um, so I have Melissa Blaustein, Hannah Meyer, Sarah Thomas, Jamie Monahan, and myself, Catherine Breed, on here. And I just kind of want to get it kicked off with each of the ladies to kind of introduce themselves. And then we're going to dive into some questions. And what I want this call to be isn't about what do you do for your training or what does a marathon swim look like? I want to know below the iceberg. And I want you guys to kind of see access to like, what do female athletes kind of go through and to know that we're not in this alone and there's, you know, different things we can all learn from each other. So to start it off, I want to hear um, where you guys are from. So this will just be Melissa, Jamie, Hannah, Sarah, where you're from, uh, what your day job is, because I think it's important for everyone to know that on top of being athletes, you know, we have full-time jobs. Um, what your most recent swim was, and then what your favorite post-swim treat is. So this is kind of a rapid fire. Uh, and Melissa, why don't you go first? Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Blastine. It's great to be here. I am from, born, and live in the San Francisco Bay Area. My most recent swim before my shoulder surgery was around Manhattan. Um, my favorite post swim treat is hot chocolate. And again, yeah, if you are not uh, talking, please mute yourself. Uh, Sarah, why don't you go? Hey. Hi, everyone. I am Sarah. I um, currently live in Denver, grew up in Texas, born in Kansas, so from a little bit all over the middle of the country. Um, let's see, the most recent swim that I did was the length of Tahoe. Did that at like two or three weeks ago, I think. Um, Love that lake. If I could swim it every day, I would. Um, let's see here. And my favorite post-swim treat is anything ice cream related. Uh, Hannah. Um, hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm originally from Chicago, and I just recently moved out to California, so I'm currently located in SoCal, uh, just outside Laguna, so I train here in Laguna. My most recent swim, um, I mean official swim, I did this super fun um, new marathon course in the Bay. I don't know if it's new to you Bay people, it's new to me, but it was my first time in San Francisco Bay. I did Three Rocks, which is super fun. Um, but what's really cool about the Laguna Coast is I get to swim a marathon every day. So I got to take Kat out for a nice long swim this past weekend. And uh, my favorite post-swim treat, I mean, after Tahoe last year, I found this really great uh, barbecue restaurant and they had the best fried cauliflower I've ever had in my life. So fried cauliflower. <laughs> uh, Jamie. That sounds really good. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. Hey guys, my name is Jamie Monahan. I'm from New York, New York, uh, a New Yorker born and bred. Um, last swim, since we can't really travel right now, uh, was around my home island of Manhattan Island. And uh, after a long swim, usually pizza will set me right. You go around your island though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is exciting. Actually, on Sunday, I did my 23rd um, lap around the island, which is, is really great because it, it ties the, the record for the most number of loops of the island. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, Catherine, my day job, I'm a medical device rep, so I manage Northern California, Nevada. Um, I'm from the Bay Area. I live now in the Bay. Um, my, out to a five, one oh, lead. Someone, yeah. Um, my most recent like swim, my most recent official swim was actually around Manhattan with Jamie, um, as on my crew, which was really so young, fun. And then my favorite post to treat is a trip. She'll hit a ball that you just can't understand why she hit it. Who is not on me? It's getting fewer and fewer of those shots. She's getting so. We'll figure it out. 
Um, great. Well, okay, so let's kind of just um, And she's not exactly pushing the ball. Great. Right. <laughs> let's try to figure out. You guys, can everyone mute, please? Awesome. Okay. Great. So um, what I did is I asked the ladies each to come up with a question for someone else. And we're going to start with Melissa because she has to hop off at 530. Um, because really exciting, Melissa is running for city council of Sausalito. So Melissa, first, can you tell us how does your passion for sustainability and the community um, development within your work um, inform your swimming and vice versa? Like how do they work together and how is the race on city council going? That's a great question. Uh, I am really concerned about the future of our oceans and I am I live in a seaside community in Sausalito which is directly impacted by sea level rise. I swim in front of my house pretty much every day and it's really easy for me to connect very closely with the issue of sustainability and swimming because I care so much about the environment that we all get to share in and swim in. And I'm the vice chair of the sustainability commission here. So I wrote our single use plastics ban um, and I'm really focused on making us more prepared for climate um, because again, being in the ocean, it's really a, a strong reminder of how important that is. Um, and city council race is going great. I just have uh, zero time and, and, um, and a bum shoulder from my surgery. So I haven't been able to swim as much as I would like to. You're muted, Kat. <laughs> I feel like having zero time and an injury or having one or the other is something that probably most of us on this call have gone through. You know, whether it's work or being a mom or dealing with health issues, it's like, how do you manage getting in training and setting swimming goals? Or does your swimming just kind of like get put on pause while you're doing this and you just acknowledge that that's okay, it's just the season? No, because I ran for city council before in 2017 and lost. And that was the same year that I was training for the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And I swam the Strait of Juan de Fuca and missed an endorsement meeting because I was swimming. So you have to just prioritize and make choices and you can't do it all. You're going to miss some stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay. Like you have to sit with the ability to miss a workout and know that you'll still be able to do your swim. Um, and I think that that's a um, and, and, you know, you have to also just, just start, like you might think that you don't have the time to do a long distance swim, but if you just start training and go little by little, I mean, I, um, never swam before 2016. Like I didn't swim in college. I didn't swim in high school. I didn't actually know how to swim really. Um, and if you just start, you'll get somewhere way faster than you think. So that's what I would say about prioritizing. Yeah, I think that's something else that like would be great for you to touch on is like, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys know Melissa, but I know her really well because we live like two miles away from each other. Um, but Melissa didn't start the sport knowing how to swim. Kim Chambers got you into swimming and then you set your sights to follow Amy Hillen's swims. And so Span Juan de Fuca was one of them. English Channel was one of them. Um, and Melissa did the English Channel, didn't finish her first time, stayed there for two weeks, went back and fin and did it. And I'm just like blown away at that grit and tenacity. And I think to go from, you know, not having swimming background into this, that terrifies a lot of people. They're like, oh, it's cool you swim the English Channel. I could never do that. I don't know how to swim. You know, what would you say to someone that, you know, is afraid to start? I would say Sarah Thomas swam it four times. So you can probably do it one time. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and, um, that, you know, you can definitely, it seems like a big goal, but I started from nowhere and there are people age 16, like Vera on this call who, do, who do it. And there are people in their sixties who do it. So when people think that they don't have the athletic ability, especially as women, I feel like we uh, undermine ourselves all the time and don't realize what we're capable of because society tells us that we, especially in sports are capable of less than men. And that, and this sport is so badass because women have way more records than men um, in marathon swimming and totally kill it in marathon swimming. So it's a real opportunity because the sport isn't a race. So like, that's why I can excel in it. It's not about, I mean, okay, maybe if you have a record like you, Kat or Sarah, but, um, 
I, if it, it's just about finishing it, it's just you against yourself. And so if you're willing to put in the willpower, um, and I, and anyway, I think I, I, and I think I've said enough. I mean, every, uh, there's so many amazing people on this call that I'm like dying to hear from before I have to sign off at five 30. But, um, anyway, I, any, anyone can do it. That's what I say to people when they say, how did you swim the English channel? I'm like, you could, do you want to go for a swim? So. Yeah. No, thank you. And like, thanks for your time. I know you have to hop off soon, but, um, I guess like, I mean, now we can hop, like Sarah, Melissa mentioned your four English channels that you did. That's insane. And I think, you know, people know about your battle with cancer and they know you swam the English channel. And I guess my question is like, you fought your cancer battle and you won that. And then you fought to do these four English channels. How do they interplay? Like, did the fight that you had with cancer help you finish the English channel or did your grit that you had from doing your hundred mile plus swims help you battle cancer? It's a good question. I think they're interchangeable. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Can you guys hear my dogs barking? <laughs> they just went crazy downstairs. Um, sorry. Um, but no, I think, you know, I have a long history of swimming. You know, I've, been a swimmer since I was a little kid and swimming has always been the coping mechanism for when things are going a little rough in life and so you know when you get something like a cancer diagnosis you fall back into your habits and swimming was definitely a positive habit you know to help me mentally physically emotionally and all of those things and so you know I had the goal of the English Channel four-way before cancer and you know having a really huge goal um is never a bad thing. And so you're dealing with demons and you're fighting for your life, literally, and you're still thinking about the future. And I don't think that that does anything except for help you. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, I think like, I mean, I'd love if you touched a little bit more on like fighting your demons, because I know mental health is something that is like on the forefront in September's you know, suicide awareness month. And like a lot of us have demons that we fight in different ways and they look differently. And for me, like I relate with that. Swimming's my safe space. You know, as a kid, it was like home sucked, but swim practice was safe and the ocean is my happy place. So it's like, how do you manage like those demons? Um, I guess. And especially on a long swim, those demons come up in the middle of the swim, you know, and it's like, I want to quit, but you don't. So how do you, I don't know, like maybe share a little bit more about that. I firmly believe in a lot of training because if you're doing a lot of training, uh, those demons are going to come up when you're in the middle of like a 10 hour training swim. So, you know, I think by the time you get to your actual event, if you've confronted those demons really openly and honestly um, in your training and in your day-to-day -day life, then you can manage them when they pop up you know, in the middle of the night um, during a long swim. So, you know, I just think it's practice, it's self-awareness, it's talking through issues and asking for support. Um, one of the things I always like to say, um, you know, if I'm in a really tough spot in a swim, you know, I used to just like hold it all in and like try and just like handle it all on my own. And now I am like not shy about telling my crew that I'm miserable and that I need help. And as soon as you do that, it takes some of the weight off of you um, as an individual and, you know, it spreads it to your team and they can help you. And I think that is a metaphor for life. You know, if you're struggling, you know, just to get through the day, having someone who can listen to you and take some of that weight is invaluable. So good crew in life, a good crew in swims. Very important. I, I love that. I actually, like I was saying, I did a swim down in Laguna this weekend and Hannah was my crew member. Um, and I had the best time because it, well, we had a good crew. And I think it, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't in a dark spot, but it was just nice to have that. Um, so thank you for sharing. I guess, Hannah, we can transition to you now. I, like, what was your entrance into marathon swimming? You swam in college and had that pressure and kind of had some injuries and you know, how does that impact the goals you set with open water swimming? Yeah, so it's a, it's a really, it's a really good question. And um, what's super exciting is, um, can you hear me? Yep. 
Okay. Uh, what's really exciting is, you know, like we literally just had like the best weekend ever. <laughs> and that's what I love about marathon swimming is like you, it's not about who's the most accomplished or who's the fastest or who's done the most of this or the most of that or the longest of this. It doesn't matter. If you're a marathon swimmer, this is such a, it's a, like, it's a broad community because it's across the world, but it's a tight community. And, you know, Kat and I, Kat is like, sorry, there's motorcycles going by the house. Kat is probably 15 seconds per 100 yards faster than me, right? So for me to keep up with her in a six hour training swim, that's her training swim, I have to wear fins, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm considered like a quick swimmer, but I'm not as fast as she is, but it didn't hold us back from having fun. And there was no, there's no jealousy. There's no competition because Kat and I have both swam Lake Tahoe and she holds the record for Lake Tahoe, but I get just as much clout for swimming Lake Tahoe as Kat does, even though I don't have the record. You know, there's probably, I know there's 60 women on this call right now. Maybe there might be some men I didn't see any, but you know, a bunch of us have swam Tahoe and it's like, okay, you know, it's not about who does it the fastest or the slowest, it's about finishing. And that's what I love about marathon swimming is it's about finishing. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I went to high school, I went to an all girls school and it is far and above the best high school swim program in the state of Illinois. I went to Rosary and they've won, I mean, we've won back to back to back state championships. And my senior year, we were runner up state champion I placed 10th in the 100 breaststroke. I freaked out. I let the anxiety get to me. I swam faster in practice than I did at state finals. And I was an All-American honorable mention. And to this day, my best friend will kill me, but I love her. Katrina, I love you. But she won't let it go that I was an honorable mention All-American. And that just shows the negativity in pool swimming and that it's all about time and it's all about what place you were and what time you went and all these other factors and in marathon swimming none of that matters you know I went to college I blew out both my shoulders I had four shoulder surgeries I was I'm, I'm really hoping that one of my college teammates has logged on or one of my college teammates will see this in college I was an asshole because I had so much pressure on my shoulders, literally so much pressure on my shoulders to be the fastest or to be the best or to be a certain thing that I blew out both my shoulders in a relay. I was leading off a relay and blew out both my shoulders and it was terrible. I was out for two years, it was awful. So I walked away from the sport for probably five years and then I was in a car accident and broke my neck and my back and then for therapy got back into swimming and then got into open water swimming and then open water swimming turned to marathon swimming turned to you know all these other things so i just kind of snowballed into it but the reason why i fell in love with the sport is because the stopwatch doesn't matter throw the stopwatch away nobody cares how fast you are i mean it it's a factor it's always a factor time's always a factor but it's all about finishing and i think that's what i love about this sport the most is finishing you know we've got Vera on this call, who's 16 years old, who just crushed the English Channel. Abby Bergman is on this call. She just, she's the fourth person ever to finish swimming um, the Santa Monica Bay. She just crushed it. I mean, Jamie just freaking went seven days in a row around Manhattan Island. What was it, like 199 miles? Like, this is like, it's amazing. And you can celebrate it. And it's fantastic. But is anybody asking, what was your time? No one's asked that yet. And I think that's what the magic of marathon swimming is, is it's about finishing and it's about setting goals. And I think it's so healthy, so healthy. Sorry, that's my platform. <laughs> that's my soapbox. Um, yeah, Jamie, I mean, I, I think for myself personally, that resonates a lot because I do get tied up to the times. I think most of the people in the call that know me know I do. Um, because I, that's how I have fun, you know, and I think the sport, the, the version, like the reason we do it is to have fun. And a part of how I have fun is setting these goals. And, you know, I'm not going to always be this physically fit to be able to like 
try to go for a record. So it's like, while I'm passionate about it, I'm going to go full gas. This is my passion right now. This is what I'm in love with. And I'm going to try to do this. And, you know, I think for each of us, that means something different. So thank you, Hannah. Um, well, Pat, I'm going to interrupt you again, because I'm going to, I'm going to support you here because <gasps> there are different types of marathon swimmers, right? There are those of us like me who I, my why is different than Melissa's why it's different than Sarah's why, you know, I've never had breast cancer. So my why and Sarah's why are super far apart. You know, my why and your why are super far apart, but I, I was a witness to how Kat trains this weekend and she blew me away. This woman is a different person in the water than she is out of the water. And I mean that in the most admiring way possible. Like you Kat are probably one of the most dedicated athletes I've ever seen in my entire life. This girl takes a feed on the fly, like on the fly. She wants the bottle to hit her in the head so she can keep swimming and glugging at the same time. I'm like, Kat, I want to stop and talk. Like, I want to talk to people. Like, I want to find out if they saw any dolphins, like, <laughs> in the last 30 minutes. Like, did the captain see a dolphin? Like, that's what I want to know. I take my time. And then there's Kat. She's just like, glug, glug, go. <laughs> and it's amazing to watch. But, you know, we're all so different. And, you know, I, I think that you have to give credit where credit is due. And that is some amazing stuff, girl. You're killing it. Um, I mean, I think amazing was Jamie. I feel like it was so under the radar what you just did. I have to ask though, you went 199 miles. Did you think about doing one more mile <laughs> to get to 200? <laughs> so some of you guys are going to kill me, but it was, I think it equated to 199.5 miles. Uh, so I know some OCD swimmers that probably, you know, just kills you. I will say my thought process, I'm sure I did more than a half a mile extra. So I think it all works out in the wash. You know, it's kind of an arbitrary number. Um, the course loops always look different, you know, so yes, but I am not that OCD, you know, kind of time focused, distance focused swimmer. Um, I may be like the type B as opposed to you alpha girls. I think I like admire it so much. And just like it was, I think Kat, I think I probably needed to take a class on how to do your feeds and, you know, our kayaking for you compared to me, you know, I'm not a slow feeder or chatter, but kind of just in terms of the precision and the racing, it's so awesome. So, um, but yeah, and I think some of your questions to me were kind of around that endeavor. I kind of love like that Taylor Swift model um, where she kind of was working quietly on things through quarantine and then all of a sudden, you know, announced what she had already done. Um, I think a lot of people get motivation from announcing their goals beforehand. I've kind of done both and I see the pros and cons of both. But for me, um, it's, it's almost like superstition not to talk about it before I've completed things. So, you know, we're all different and I love kind of the diversity diversity of different training plans and goals and, you know, different styles that we have on the line and, you know, between the panelists, not just the panelists, but all the amazing folks on the line. So. Yeah. Can you tell us more about your ice swimming? Cause I feel like, you know, we've got three people who do marathon swimming and you do that as well, but I don't know about Hannah, Sarah, and Melissa. I have never done an ice swim. Um, you know, and I know that that is like your bread and butter, um, in one sense. <laughs> It is funny. I do think people find it so fascinating just because it is very different from, you know, as pool swimmers or going to the beach, what we grew up with. But for me, it's just, just the diversity of water that we have. And I kind of came into this sport accidentally. Um, you know, I have a passion for travel as well. And we had been planning a vacation um, to Finland to see the Northern Lights. Um, at the same time on the English Channel Swimmers Group, I got a notification of the World Winter Swimming Championships in Rovaniemi, Finland, which was kind of equidistant between um, Helsinki, where we were going to see friends and finish Lapland where we were hoping to see the Northern Lights. So kind of just started to train for that. I'm like, 
you know, it looked really wild. I was looking at YouTube videos and kind of took the jump and, you know, we're lucky in Brooklyn, Coney Island, New York here, we do have a group of winter swimmers who uh, train year round. So started to jump in with them, train for the championships and, you know, just really got addicted. It's, you know, it's really unique, you know, as opposed to walking in from a beach, you're actually going down a frozen ladder um, into a pool that, you know, it may look a little bit like the pools we grew up with, but it's cut out of a frozen lake or a frozen river and you know the water is close to freezing which is really wild to kind of go down the lat you know take off your clothes kind of in cadence with other swimmers uh, you go down the ladder and just immerse yourself up to the shoulders in water and you're kind of just held there so instead of waiting for the start on the blocks you're kind of frozen on the wall until you get the green light to go ahead and then it's kind of all bets are off. So I started out with really short distances of ice swimming and kind of built up gradually to a 450 meters, a thousand meters, and then the ice mile, which was a really cool challenge unto itself. So um, I've been lucky, you know, kind of in terms of doing both the mix of marathon swimming and ice and winter swimming um, to do also different types. So really big competitions internationally with thousands of other swimmers from all over the world, which is so exciting to really personal challenges where you know we're designing an expedition to basically go up into the mountains to swim by a glacier and do a mile um, on our own there so you know again it's that diversity of the water and you know just the different way of seeing the world that gets me so excited about that part of swimming um, and it's nice because it's a competitive sport and you know you are racing in the pool but in the end everybody gets together in the hot tub or in the sauna afterwards and it's just such a bonding experience yeah, I mean, I want to do one. I think it sounds really fun. Um, like one more question for you. Like you've been in the sport for a while now. Um, you know, it's fair. I know you have as well. But what are some of the biggest changes you've seen? Because I mean, I, I consider myself on the younger end of the marathon swimming age group. You know, we've got Vera and Abby on here. And like, what are the biggest changes that you've seen in the sport? If you've seen any, I know marathon swimming is like kind of a purist sport. so maybe there haven't been a lot of changes. I don't, I'm just curious on your insight. Yeah, I think it's amazing to see just kind of the the cultures that have uh, kind of grown up around different places. Like 10 years ago, it was pretty rare to swim Lake Tahoe. And, you know, all of a sudden in the past year or two, it's become, you know, there's a couple of great organizations piloting swims there. And, you know, the word has really gotten out. And I think people have gotten excited, especially for you, uh, folks in California, you guys are getting excited, not just about the English channel, but also something in your own backyard. So um, I think there's a lot better information out there. There's a lot of technology in terms of tracking and feeding, and we all share that knowledge, which kind of the curve to get up to speed, like figuring out what works for you. Um, hopefully that learning curve is a little bit shorter. Um, and I would say, you know, for better or for worse, I think most people, you know, 10 years ago would pick one event to train for every couple of years. Um, or, you know, every year to pick as a goal, which is awesome. And, you know, I think that's still so amazing if, you know, if we do one marathon swim in a lifetime. But, you know, I think on the other end, we, we get addicted to the feeling of just being in the water and pushing yourself and, you know, seeing the world from this perspective. Uh, you know, like you said, we all have day jobs, but um, in this world of constant cell phones, you know, it's one place that we can get away from, you know, email and voicemail and, you know, texts. So I, that is actually one of my favorite parts about swimming. I don't know how many people on this call can relate, but it's like, you can't bring your phone with you. You don't even have the option. I mean, you could, but let's be honest, we're not bringing <laughs> our phones with us and you can go on a run or go on a bike ride. And I still have my watch beeping notifications and, you know, you've still got sights and sounds and cars and it's just nice to shut off. Like, I, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, no, thank you guys. Um, so I kind of want to transition now into like asking questions that everyone, um, on the panel can answer together. Um, but thank you, Melissa, so much. Good luck with your call tonight. Um, I guess, Sarah, I want to hear a little bit. I know that you're kind of using your platform of swimming and a cancer survivor fighter, like to transition into motivational speaking. Um, how's that going? And, you know, what are you, when you're standing up on stage, I'm sure you have kind of like a, what your story is that you're telling. And I know Jamie, you've done some of this as well. So if you guys could both share maybe 
how you got into motivational speaking, um, that would be awesome. Sure. So it's definitely still a work in progress. Um, COVID has not been kind to speaking. Um, a lot of what I've done recently has been like high school groups or cancer support groups and things like that. Um, uh, my friend Elaine and I talked to a business via Zoom a couple months ago, which was really fun to kind of do like a fireside chat with a friend who knows swimming. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of that stuff, a lot of like podcasts and things along those lines. Um, hoping for more um, as soon as COVID maybe lets in-person conferences and meetings happen again. Um, but really, you know, when I'm trying to hone my message, you know, I really do like to share my story, you know, all the things that I went through, you know, you know, kind of pretty standard until I hit the age of um, 35 and, you know, don't normally get a breast cancer diagnosis when you're 35 years old and, you know, really have talking about having to dig deep and set goals and the grit that it takes to accomplish things, even in the face of adversity and, um, really in the, in the grace that it takes to overcome those, not just with others around you, but, you know, giving yourself grace, um, to fail and to, you know, not hit the standards that you're expecting to hit, um, and kind of just understanding that we're all a work in progress. So those are kind of my, my three big things, goals, grit, and grace. Um, hopefully that message can resonate with people. I love that. I think that's, I think for women, it would kind of resonate, you know, like there's, I, forget, I think my grandma and my mom always said there's strength and femininity. And I love that. Like there is strength in having that grace, um, you know, and having those goals and being able to like, and then use a strong woman and go after that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, what have your talks been about? Yeah, so um, I am I'm not as much of a uh, inspirational speaker. I was really fortunate to be invited to a university in Japan to do a TEDx talk for them, uh, which was awesome. Um, I think I mentioned when I first jumped on what I do kind of in my day job or day and night job, um, but I'm the US head of campus recruitment for a international investment bank. So my comfort zone is really um, in talking to college students and just, you know, talking to them about different career opportunities, coaching them on different things that are in front of them. Um, so I feel really comfortable talking to hundreds of people, but not necessarily about myself. Um, so it was a great learning experience for me. Um, the theme of that talk was actually about doing things that scared me and just getting out of my comfort zone in different points in my marathon swimming journey, pushing myself within ice swimming and winter swimming, and just creating some of the personal challenges that I've chosen to pursue um, and kind of equating that to where they might be in their job journey as college students. Um, this was a really unique um, international university. Um, all the students would be studying abroad. A lot of them spent a lot of time organizing this incredibly professional conference. So just helping them draw the parallels as to, you know, where they might use that and where they might be able to get out of their comfort zone and grow from it. So that was my kind of theme. And again, it was a learning experience for me just kind of writing with them um, creating the content and then just flying around the world to, to deliver it to this amazing audience so um, it was great for me I don't know how much of it will be in my future um, but it was enjoyable and again something you know that pushed me out of my comfort zone as well yeah I, I think like another way to say that is get comfortable with being uncomfortable that's something I say all the time or to people and it's like open water swimming is not comfortable. Like, I don't think there's any part of it where, unless it's like 75 degree water in Laguna where it's flat, but <laughs> like it's cold or it's bumpy or there's, there's sea creatures down there. But, um, you know, I think it's, it does make you, if you can do that, if you can do any form of it, it's like, <laughs> thanks Hannah. <laughs> um, you know, you can do those one things, those things that scare you every day. And, it doesn't always have to be athletics either. Like I know Hannah is in the process of starting an association and starting swimming associations. I know a lot of you guys have done that or tried to book a swim through one. I know it can be um, a process. So I think like just being a female who's going out and doing this, it's really cool to see. Um, so Hannah, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, so this has kind of been a, a little bit under the wraps until now. So um, it's uh, it's really exciting to speak about, you know, one thing that I know Kat and I have really connected on is, you know, marathon swimming can be pretty cost prohibitive. You know, there's a whole thread on the, um, I don't know if, if everyone is a member of MSF, I definitely suggest becoming a member of the Marathon Swimmers Federation. Um, but on the forum, it's a, it's a huge, there's a tons of, tons of threads of, of information that date back, I mean, like decades, well, not decades, maybe a decade, but, um, you know, there's a lot of information on there. And one of the threads is about how much it costs <laughs> to do the Ocean 7. And um, I think the most updated post I saw, it was something north of like 40 grand or something crazy like that. You know, just to do the English channel, you know, you're talking, if you're an American, I mean, you're looking at all in like $10,000 and it's so expensive. And, you know, I've, you know, traveled and, and done a bit of, you know, my own swimming here and there, but I'm in a position where I'm lucky enough to swim for a charity and I'm, I'm a sponsored athlete through a charity. And so my charity actually covers the cost of my swims. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do what I've done thus far without a long swim organization. I just, I flat out wouldn't because I wouldn't be able to afford it. So I moved here to Laguna and I started swimming out here and they call this, I, I really, I wish it wasn't so gross out because I'm literally staring at the Catalina channel right now. <laughs> I was supposed to swim in a couple of air like last week, but you know, it got canceled. Um, but this is what they call the blue belt and the water here, it's all the entire Laguna coastline is a marine protected area. And I started swimming out here. I swim with Laguna Beach open water swimmers um, that was headed up by Scott Zoring um, and a few others. Scott was the former president of the Santa Barbara Association. And Scott started telling me about all these marathon swims you can do along the Laguna coast. And, you know, I was talking about how I'm training for Monterey Bay, which I'm swimming in three weeks. And he was like, oh, you, you have to do this. You know, he calls it um, like the Laguna Cove to Cove swim or something like that. And it's basically Corona Del Mar, Newport Beach, all the way to the headlands of Dana Point. That's uh, what Kat swam this past weekend. I swam it a couple weekends ago and then I'm going to swim it again on Sunday. Um, but it's beautiful. I mean, it, there's, blue water and there's kelp and there's reefs and there's all kinds of fish and seals and sea lions and there's some sharks and you know all the fun stuff and it's just gorgeous and nobody is doing any kind of swims or swim trainings out here so I was like you know what we need to make this happen so the Santa Barbara Association does all the Santa Barbara channels obviously the Catalina Association does the Catalina channel but there's no one doing the coast, the, the coastal swims. So um, we've identified a 5K, a 10K, a 10 mile, a 12 mile, and a 15 mile. And um, we are forming <laughs> the Southern California Open Water Swim and Paddle Association. The reason I say swim and paddle is because my pilot, his experience is actually in um, uh, supporting outrigger paddlers. So he just started supporting swimmers a couple months ago when he started supporting me and he actually piloted Cat on Sunday. Um, he's amazing. But um, basically what we're going to do is make marathon swimming and marathon swim training affordable and we're going to make it easy. It's going to be easily accessible, affordable, and um, actually Tim, who's our pilot, He's custom building a boat specifically to do these Laguna Coast swims. Like he's amazing. And uh, we're just going to go out there and have fun. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's going to be a cool, sick ride. And I, I can't wait for anyone to come out right now. We're testing all the courses. So I, I'm going to make an open invitation. <laughs> if anyone's interested in swimming the Laguna coastline, um, and testing out these courses and kind of helping us sort of get this association off the ground and, and get Laguna Coast swimming um, moving, uh, send me an email. <laughs> I'll throw my email in the comments, but um, I'm going to be, I'll be on the board of directors. I've just asked Kat to be on the board of directors. Uh, we have a pilot, um, Tim, and his wife, Kathy, will be our president. 
And then a good friend of mine, Stephanie, um, who is also the owner operator of Surge Swim Method will also be on the board. So it's a powerful team, basically run by women and we make the man run the boat. <laughs> but you know, we have to make it more affordable. It's just, it's the cost, the cost is, it's crazy and I get it, I get it. For some people, swim training and piloting swims is, is their way of life. And, and so they, they charge what they charge. And, and, I, and I fully understand that. And I, I, will, I will pay the price, you know, but when it comes to my backyard and, and what I wanna offer, you know, I wanna do that here. I've also been in talks with certain people who may or may not have just swam around Anacapa today about um, open water swimming for kids. So uh, we're also going to take teenagers. So I am a professional swim coach. Um, my day job, I work at USA Water Polo. I'm in programs and operations. But um, I also privately coach 12 to 18 year olds. And um, I actually take my clients out here in uh, Corona Del Mar and Laguna Beach. And I've got a couple swimmers. We're going to put together some teenager Catalina relays coming up. So it's really exciting. So. Lots of really cool stuff is happening, that's for sure. But we're getting kids involved and we're bringing the cost down. I love that. Um, Cindy just asked, what are you doing for observers, Hannah? So we are gonna create our own sort of like observer training. Um, so one of, I forgot to mention, oh my God, I cannot believe I forgot to mention this. So my, um, the, basically on our board, our safety officer is actually Jax Cole. So anybody who has swam the Catalina Channel or most people in California, if you've ever needed a paddler, um, Jax Cole is probably the person you called. Um, she's phenomenal. She's a, a marathon swimmer in her own right, but Jax actually already trains observers for um, other different marathon swims. So Jax is gonna hop on board and she's gonna do all the training. She's gonna outline all of our safety procedures and she's gonna head that up for us. So. Um, I don't know, she just finished a swim recently. So um, she was paddling a swim today. So I don't know if she's on this right now, but she'll definitely be watching it. But Jack is, when we talk about a powerhouse woman, man, she is, she's awesome. She's awesome. She's actually my paddler from Monterey. Yeah, she's cool. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and I think this is a really perfect transition into, Hannah, you were talking about bringing kids into the sport. So I'd love to hear yeah. from, Anna, Sarah, Jamie, how are you guys um, finding ways to inspire and bring young, new young girls into open water swimming? You know, and I love that Vera, that you're on this call. Um, you know, I was just gonna say, like, I feel like we should even like call on Vera for a hot second. Yeah, Want to talk? <laughs> like, I think uh, seriously, like, I'm actually kind of curious to ask Vera as somebody who coaches teenagers, like literally kids your age. Um, you know. Was it, do you have a coach? Like, do you, did you, was it hard to find a coach or was it all just kind of like swimming with your mom and your sister? Like, could you tell us about that? Is she muted? Uh, she's off mute. And Margaret, you could answer as well too. I'd love to hear from you. I mean, I think hear from you guys. Go for it. It's just, just tell us like kind of like how you got brought into the sport, I guess, or like why did you choose to do this sport as a kid? Well, we started when we were little kids. We did started with mommy and me classes, um, and at the pool, and then did pool swimming. And we live on a small lake, so we were just like learning how to swim um and it kind of grew from there and we started with one mile and kept going from there and then uh we went with bill white and did the kingdom swims with him and just, I think it was just mostly because it was so fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like, when you swim a mile, like, once they got in and they were 
realize like how much fun it was. Um, so I think it's like kind of getting over the fear of of just like the parent the the parental fear of, uh, of is this safe, you know, and that can be here just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and Vera, what about you? I think she's trying. I think their internet. <laughs> um, oh, their internet's not great. Yeah. So I think yeah. I, I just, uh, we can yeah. Over the no, we can't really and hear you. Just, oh, there she is. You know, like trying something new. Oh, yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> we can we can try this again with you guys. Um, Did you hear what she said? No. Oh, so she was saying, I kind of, I think I caught it. So Vera, just, Vera, throw it in the chat if I misinterpret. But I think what she was saying is they, they started, they're lucky because they have that lake in their backyard. So they were able to go out and swim. They started with one mile and then kept working up from that and working up from that. And then um, like just set those goals and, and just went out and attacked them. And I think that's just amazing. And the fact that you have such great family support, that's key, you know? That's so key. That's awesome. I love to hear that. <laughs> did I get did I get it right? I got a thumbs up. I, I got some good listening ears. <laughs> I love. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess then so for you guys, what's Hannah, you know, Sarah, Jamie, what's the hardest part about not just being a marathon swimmer, but about being a female marathon swimmer? I know what's hard for me, <laughs> um, but I'll let you guys go first, um, you know. Anyone can go. All right, Jamie, you have to answer first. I was gonna say, like, Jamie's on. <laughs> go, Jamie. <laughs> I love it, I'm happy to volunteer. It's just hard not to step on toes in these sometimes. We all start to talk, we all wait, and then start talking at once. So I was kind of waiting for that pause. Um, I would say, honestly, I think in open water swimming, both, you know, with marathon swimming and with ice and winter swimming, there's definitely different communities. And, you know, sometimes there's a little bit more baggage or weight placed on us, I think, you know. I'm 41 years old. There's a lot of pictures of me in a swimsuit. I try to embrace it. I try to, you know, really enjoy representing different body types because I think that's another thing that's really cool about all of our disciplines. It's not kind of a uniform body type like you might see for pool racers. You know, whatever um, situation you're in, if you can do it, you're kind of accepted as part of the club, which is great. And, you know, that's something also that I feel really passionate about is, you know, I get a lot of questions like who should do ice swimming who should do marathon swimming but my response is always everybody should be we should all be enjoying our bodies swimming is an essential survival sport as well so it's really important that everyone know how to swim embrace it get out there and just enjoy the amazing things that we can do so um, there's definitely some additional challenges and baggages but you know kind of flipping that over and really being a role model for other people I think a lot of people kind of see me I'm pretty laid back they think okay if she can do it you know when I roll up to swims you know I'm usually with my partner Arik who's kind of like a fit looking lean male and people always assume he's there the one to do the swims and he also gets a kick out of being like no it's her she's the one who's going to do this crazy distance so just kind of surprising people and you know putting different um, types out there I think is really important That's great. what about you Sarah okay this is not as deep as what Jamie had to say but can we talk about how terrible swimsuits are just like in general like I men do not have this problem okay our <laughs> swimsuit straps and the way that they're cut and if you want a suit that's comfortable it might be made for like a 17 year old chick and I am not a 17 year old chick and some girls can like rock the two piece but I can't keep the two piece on the top I have no idea what's wrong with my boobs but it will not stay put and then you chafe in like the most awful places and I'm telling you guys have it easy right they can wear a jammer they can wear a speedo you know, maybe they chafe in one place that we don't chafe, but like, it's awful. And I, you know, 
That is probably the hardest thing about being a female in marathon swimming is just figuring out what swimsuit to wear because we're all so different. <laughs> I feel like you get ones and it's like the back of the suit isn't actually made for a swimmer. I'm right. like, my back is bigger than that. Like, I yes. swim. Or I always joke, like, I wish I could wear the knee suits just so I didn't have to deal with a wedgie. Yes. Honestly. And like, sometimes the butts are cut so low and I'm like, I'm 38. No one wants to see my butt crack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel that. I feel that. Oh my um, God, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's seriously my biggest beef. You know, I think we have some like major advantages over the guys, but when it comes to swim attire, we are at a severe disadvantage. <laughs> Oh, yeah, or like when you get stuff like stuck in your suit. I know Jamie and I had a private conversation the other day. We were texting back and forth. I think on like DMs, and uh, we were talking about like things that get stuck in our suits. And she sent me a picture of like a seahorse, and I was like, "What is that?" She's like, "It was stuck in my suit." And I kid you not, the next day I was swimming in the back bay in Newport. I got a moon jelly down the front of my suit. I like pulled it out. I was like, "Look, guys, it's a moon jelly." Like. How does that happen? <laughs> I got a fish in my suit the other day and I like pulled it and it was like flopping around in my belly and I thought, like, oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And twigs and seaweed and mud. I remember doing a swim with a male friend and, and it was kind of mucky. And we get out and I like doing a deck change, right? And I pull my swimsuit all the way down and like this wad of like I don't even know what it was, just fell out. And he was like, what was that? And I was like, it was in my suit. He's like, totally didn't get it. But I mean, if we talk about silver linings, like when I do long swims, I actually, Kat and I talked about this weekend, I actually stuff like water bottles in the butt of my suit. And then under like the hip part, I'll put like a gel or like an applesauce. Like I carry, I hate wearing... I don't like the swim buoys. So I don't like to tow them behind me. So I, I like to put everything on my person. And Kat actually puts them, she puts them up in her cap. And I was like, that's genius. <laughs> we use our God given pockets, right? <laughs> What's the, what do you think is the hardest thing for you, Hannah, as a female swimmer? I wouldn't say that it's um, a, being a female swimmer. Um, I think that it's being an outspoken and an opinionated female swimmer. Um, as you guys can tell, I'm not afraid to speak my mind. <laughs> um, and I think that uh, strong women athletes get misunderstood. And I'm going to use the term misunderstood because I cannot count on... I can't even count how many times I've been in a social situation when it comes to like swim groups where I could have the best of intentions and, and come to the table with the purest of intentions and the purest heart. And because I have a big personality, um, people try to cut me down. And I think that's been one of the toughest things. You know, I've moved a lot. I've traveled around the world a lot. And, you know, when I first came to Laguna, I was like, oh my God, look at this swim community. It's amazing. And I met all these people and, you know, I tried to hold myself back. And then I slowly started to like, get to know people. And I, somebody asked me a question on a group chat one day, and it was a group chat that like 150 people are in. And I'm new to the group. And I answered the question and gave a link to my website answering the question. And somebody wrote back to the whole group, not just to me personally, to the whole group, oh, this group isn't for advertising or something like that. And I literally, like, I went into a shell for like a whole week and I was afraid to go swim with this group and I was afraid to be around these people. And I still haven't seen this person since she made this comment. And I'm still afraid to see her again because what she said hurt so deep because my intention was, I was answering a question and my intention was to say, oh, this is a part of me and this is a part of my personality and this is who I am and part of what I do. And this other person took it and just, she just hit me out at the knees. 
and it was hurtful. And I think the hardest and most hurtful part of it is that she's a marathon swimmer. Mm -hmm. And that's what hurts so much. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, we have to come together and we have to support each other. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money is in your pocket, what you look like, how much you weigh, how fast you swim, the mother freaking English channel, nobody cares. What should matter is that we all love the same thing and it's distance swimming. And if I post in the group that I'm gonna swim a 10K on Saturday and I wanna know who wants to do it with me, it's not because I'm trying to say, look at me, I'm gonna swim a 10K and F everybody else. I'm asking for you to join me and I'm asking you to be with me and I'm asking you to come along this journey with me. And my pure intention is for you to come and do this with me. And for people to misunderstand that, that's the hardest thing for me about being a strong woman is just being carte blanche misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And it just boils down to the fact that people judge you before they know you especially in this sport. This sport's super small, and but it's very broad. We're across the whole world, but you can only count, you, you, we could probably all list off how many people have swam certain swims this year. You know, we all know what everybody's doing and we have to support each other and we have to stick together because if we don't do that, then it becomes this war zone and it becomes like almost like the zombie apocalypse of marathon swimming where like one person gets infected and then they infect someone else and then they infect somebody else and they infect somebody else. And then before you know it, you've just done a world record breaking swim and now you're in tears because somebody was mean to you because somebody made a comment. And I think that that's the worst. And when that happened to me, it was right after so I, I did that three rock swim. It's a 10 K it's in the bay. You know, I was super proud of myself. I set the course record. I set the women's course record. I had awesome tides. I knew I had awesome tides. Like I knew I was on pace to go faster than the only other woman who swam it. I was like the second woman to swim it. And because of people's prejudice, they just wanted to cut me down. And I think that we have to stand up as a community together and we can't let that happen. Again, another soapbox, but there we go. No, I mean, just, just looking at how many responses are in the chat, Hannah, I think what you're saying, like, transcends swimming. And, you know, swimming is a small, marathon swimming, swimming is a small community, but, like, women face this in work. We face this with our families. We face this with dating. We face it with our friends. Like, I can't tell you how many times I get told I'm intimidating based off nothing other than people know I swim for a long time. And it's, it's hard. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm not like, you need to get to know me. Um, so I think, I mean, what you said was powerful. Thank you, Hannah. Um, my biggest struggle is probably a little similar to Jamie, but I mean, I like, I don't always love the, my marathon swimming body. And I think that's something that as a kid, you know, being a 5'11 swimmer who was going to Cal to swim and had the like big, strong body, I was like, I didn't feel, you know, like I fit in like all the other girls and my mom, you know, here we go. Moms are wise. Listen to your moms. Um, <laughs> she said, you know, your body's a tool and this is the, like what you need your tool to be able to do. And if I wanted to become a marathon trail runner, I would use my body as a tool to be something else. And I've gone through my head of, oh, maybe I don't want to swim any, I don't want my body to look like this. So I'm going to stop swimming. And I'm like, wait, no, I, I love swimming too much. So it's accepting that like my body is incredible because it can do this. And I'm going to love the body fat I have on it because it can get me across the North channel. I'm going to love that my back is so big because it will power me through Monterey. And I think, you know, for the young girls on this call, it's hard, you know, like it's hard having the broad shoulders and the big swimmer back, but know that like, there's so much strength in that and beauty and power and like embrace that and love it. Um, cause the earlier you can start, you know, the better, the better for you. So that's what I struggle with. Um, Pat, will you talk, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. Will you talk about the weight gain for the North channel? Cause 
you and I really connected on that, you know, like I've just gained 35 pounds <laughs> per month, right? But I think your story of, of the North Channel and all the weight you gained and then your experience in the North Channel, could you tell everyone more about that? Yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know, I swam the North Channel last year um, in the summer and it was, it was rough. You know, it wasn't a, an easy channel. The winds were pretty bad, but I knew it was cold. The water temperature was going to be 52 degrees the whole way. No wetsuit, obviously. Um, so I intentionally gained muscle because that actually um, holds in heat a little better than fat, but I also gained fat. So I worked with my trainer and I probably put on about 30 pounds, um, may, maybe closer to 25 pounds. Um, but oh my gosh, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, you know, my bathing suit wasn't fitting right. I, you know, I, so I didn't feel great about it, but I got out of that North channel swim and I powered through the last mile and I got out of that swim and I wasn't cold. And it's like, my body was a tool for that. Um, and Hannah and I both have Monterey coming up. So, you know, after the North channel, I lost the weight and then during COVID, I wasn't swimming much. Um, so I was like in land sport shape. Um, and then I recently put it back on. I know Hannah's put some weight on as well because Monterey is 25 miles, about 54 to 56 degrees. So you need that warmth. You need that brown fat. You need that extra muscle to get across. And the beauty of it is you can lose it. Like, you know, the beauty of it is like we're doing this, this is like putting on an extra cap or getting fancy goggles. This is part of training for marathon swimming is training your body to do what you want it to do, what you need it to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, weight gain isn't the prettiest part of the sport. I don't think you need to gain a ton of weight, but I think there is certain swims where having a little extra helps. Um, and it's just like being at peace with that and being okay with it. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah. So and I do, you know, I don't know, that's, yeah, that's about it with my North Channel, but let's see, what other questions do we have for you? Um, I guess, oh, here's kind of a fun one. So they do say, I don't know if you guys have read Roar, um, Stacy, oh, I'm blanking on her last name. Uh, she wrote the book and it's um, about Stacy Sims. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's about, you know, being a female athlete and that we're not small men. And she actually mentions marathon swimming in the book. And do you guys think that women are better at marathon swimming than men? And why? Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a long explanation. Just, it's, I'm curious to hear your opinions on it. Uh, Sarah, you can go first. People ask me this all the time. Um, I don't know if I think that we're better. Um, I think I know a lot of really amazing men and a lot of really amazing women. And I think, I, I don't know. Um, I, I honestly, I wish I had a good answer for this because people do ask me all the time and I have like totally failed to come up with a good answer. I think in general, when I compare, like if I'm really generalizing, I think women are better prepared for marathon swims than men are. I think we're more willing to like work our asses off for it. And I see a lot of men who are a lot more willing to wing it. Um, no, and that is just a generalization. I know lots of guys that work really, really hard and I know women that wing it too. So, you know, I, it goes both ways, but I do think just women, when we set a goal, we, want to make sure that we're successful. Whereas a man maybe isn't quite as afraid of failure as we are. So I think it turns out that maybe when you look at our results, we, I don't know. Um, I know when you look at some of like the top marathon swimmers in the world, you've got the Chloe McArdles and the Penny Paul Fries and you know, all these really amazing women who are going longer than guys, but then you've got the Cameron Bellamy's as well. So, you know, there's, you know, I, I don't know. That's my answer is I don't know, maybe I should let someone else take this one because um, I think just to complete a marathon swim is, a, is an amazing feat. And I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily is a male female thing. Um, I think it's a personality thing. Um, and those of us who are strong mentally and physically, and we're the ones that are succeeding, whether we're male or whether we're female. 
So I know we're talking about women, so <laughs> someone else can no, take it. No, I, I love that. And I think, you know, I think that is what it really boils down to. I think, you know, there there is some science that says, like, as the endurance gets longer, the percentage difference between men and women get di- get closer. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love that. I love that answer. I don't know, Jamie, Hannah, do you guys have any thoughts on that? I'll jump in since you called on me last time. Um, I think it's just marathon swimming is so, I mean, especially amateur marathon swimming is just so different. Like the same course on a different day or even 15 minutes later can be completely different. It's really hard to benchmark it if people are not racing one-on-one. That being said, I think, you know, women are strong mentally, physically. There's a lot that we're equipped to do where maybe that is, I think it always comes back to the body percent uh, fat percentage, which I think is just a simple answer and definitely not all to it. But, you know, I think we're all really unique. There's different types of people. So, you know, you kind of see the results spread out. And again, it it's hard to cross compare. Um, I love the parallels to ultra running. I see Courtney, Courtney, you're amazing on the bike right now. It's so amazing. You're a good um, example of the drive and the training that um, many people do. But, you know, again, there's no easy answer. I think that they're trying to put some research behind it or different hypotheses. But, you know, again, the sport is so individual. We're all so different. You can't really generalize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anna, do you have any thoughts on it? Sorry, I had to go to unmute. Um, I mean, yes and no. I think the statistics show that women um, close the gender gap in marathon anything. Um, But I mean, let's look at like Monterey Bay. Like, I mean, it's just on the top of my mind because it's all I'm thinking about right now. But it's had um, 17 attempts, five completions, four female, one male. You know, it's, it's considered one of the hardest crossings. And um, the highest percentage of failure um, that I have been told, I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but the, uh, per, the highest percentage of failure is lack of preparedness and hypothermia. And that's been mostly men. So I think it's the body fat percentage. You know, that's a big thing that, you know, like I've been trying to build for this swim is uh, not just... It's you, when you gain weight for swims, you're not just gaining weight to gain weight. Like I'm not just like eating ice cream every night and you know, like that kind of thing. I'm then like methodically putting on or, or hopefully putting on brown fat, which will, you know, insulate. So, um, I, I mean, I don't know. It is like, like what Sarah said, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say. I mean, we're women. So like, we totally want to be like, yes, like women are the best. Um, but like, you know, look at Cameron Bellamy, right? Like he's crushing it out there too. So I don't know. Jury's out. Yeah. Maybe we should, maybe we should get like uh, the Harvard or something to do a study or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I know I had this call set from five to six, but I think in my head I had five to six thirty. So I think we're all okay sitting on for a little couple more questions. Um, All right, if you guys were to come up with a mission statement that is your swimming or the way that you approach your swimming, what would it be? I'm happy to go first because I think mine's a lot with my Instagram title. Um, So my Instagram, (laughs) Hannah, this isn't an advertisement, (laughs) but it's, um, it's beyond the black line. And for me, it, the black line of the pool is indicative of like what life could be. You know, we have the pool and it's a square box and you follow the black line back and forth, back and forth. And it's about breaking through that and breaking through the barriers of your own mind and pushing yourself and seeing what else is out there. So it's going beyond, I guess, um, the status quo or going beyond what you're used to. Um, and I actually have this picture that I'm looking at in my kitchen and it's, uh, this picture of like two swimmers in a pool. They're two guy swimmers actually, which is funny. And there's a female swimmer breaking through it to open water. I'm going to grab it. Hold on. Um, but I like, I love this. I don't know if you guys can see it, but 
it's just like, it's perfect. So I don't know. That's kind of my mission statement, but. I love that. I think mine is, um, this is not an advertisement, <laughs> but it's, uh, I named my uh, business, my swim training business. It's called Swim Statera. And I actually came up with the Statera swim method, um, uh, which is, Statera is the Latin word for balance. And in my life, I found that everything I do, I have to have balance. And um, that's how I swim. And, and that's how I live my life. I live my life in balance. So, you know, do I, I'm not, I'm not strict on one side or the other. I try to balance myself in training and that sort of thing and everything as well. So mine would probably, like my mantra is just swim Statera, swim in balance, stay balanced, stay equal. Um, if you go too far one way, come back the other, you know, let the, let your pendulum swing, but know that it's going to swing back the other direction as well. And if that's a negative or a positive consequence, then you just kind of have to deal with it. And, you know, that's something I tell my kids all the time, you know, choices have positive and negative consequences, but we need to understand is you always have a choice. And if you choose a, it's positive, choose B, it's a negative, but you know, it's, it's still your choice, no matter what, you always have a choice. And so everything is about balance and choices and, and what you, what you choose to do. That's great. Uh, Jamie or Sarah? Jamie, do you want to go? You go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you tell Jamie and I are the quiet ones of the group and, and Kat are like, let's get it out there. Um, let's see here. I don't know if I really have a mission statement. Um, for me, I have to swim, you know, and I do it because it's fun and I love it and I want other people to love it. Um, I think a lot of people put so much weight on their marathon swims and really, truly, it's supposed to be fun whether you're succeeding or whether you have a failure, you know, whatever happens in the water is part of your journey. And when I look at my swimming and other people's swimming, all I really get excited about are people who are enjoying their journey. I know my husband and I were almost in tears watching Vera's English Channel Dot because she just really epitomizes what swimming is to me. You know, someone out there pushing her limits because she loves to swim. And that, that is why I swim. Um, I want to see what I can do. I want to see what I can accomplish. And I love watching other people attempting to do the same thing, whether it's a 5K or 100 miles. It, everything in between is valuable. And so it's fun. Go out there, have fun. Don't be afraid to fail and get after it. So I guess that's, that's me. I love that, Sarah. I'm glad I let you go first because I feel like ours mesh really well together. I mean, the thing about amateur marathon swimming is nobody's paying us to do it. So you have to find goals and you have to have swims that resonate with you. I'm not the type of person that's going to check off a list. You know, I want to do something if I'm going to spend my time away from work my money on something it has to be something that just really calls to me and that could be something that's a mile away from my house or it can be something on the other side of the world and you know my perspective you know sometimes we let ourselves get down Hannah your story kills me sometimes the people who talk the most are the people who you know have the least to say and you know you shouldn't let that you should really i think i read a good quote about you should never take criticism from someone whose advice you wouldn't take um, there's a lot of people that don't do very much swimming themselves and they really want to talk about what everybody else ought to do so for me the thing to counteract that is if i'm really focused on my personal goals and doing swims that i love and that call to me that's what remedies all of that you know, for me, I, you know, I'm not that person and thank goodness just during this time that I need to swim every day. I love it. I appreciate whenever I get to do it, but you know, there's other things, you know, my life is more about creating almost like a scrapbook. I think it's important to make your life what you want it to be. For me, it's almost like a piece of art, you know, I've run with the bulls in Pamplona. I've been to the top of Kilimanjaro. I've swum with icebergs and glaciers and had these amazing experiences all over the world. And, you know, to me, that's worthwhile. And I think as long as you can look back on that, that is really the biggest 
um, goal or journey that you can put yourself on. And again, it's not about checking things off or doing any one particular swim, but just putting that like scrapbook of your life together is really important. And that can be swimming or that can be family, it can be education, it can be what you create at work. It's so many different things. So I think as you pursue what's meaningful to you, you can't go wrong. You can't be misled. Snaps to that. I love that. I also, I was just thinking, I love that we each have like pretty different ones, but they all kind of work together. You know, um, I think that's, that's great. All right, you guys, we're going to do some like rapid fire questions. They're just kind of like quick answers. Um, you guys can all answer or what one of you can answer. So I guess, um, when you're training, do you guys train pool and open water or just one or the other? Both. 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 <laughs> um, I'm doing both, but because of COVID, I have been staying away from the pool, so I've just been open water. Yeah, so that's my next question is with COVID, have you guys been training a lot or just sticking to open water? No. Just open just water. Just open water for me, yeah, and, and focusing on work a lot right now, which, you know, very fortunate to be employed and have something I'm passionate about, but, you know, again, very, I, I think I didn't miss, uh, I didn't know how much I missed swimming until I was able to do it again, so um, it's been great. Yeah. Um, all right, do you guys jump in the water or do you wade in? Jump. I know Sarah's on this. I hate, I hate jumping. I'm a skater. I'll stand for like an hour if I need to. Oh my God. Off the boat, um, it's the my, worst. it's my thing to do a belly flop, but I think if, if Abby's still on this call, Abby's my training partner, so she knows, like, if the water's cold, it takes me a second. I have to, like, splash myself. <laughs> so there's, like, a splash zone behind me, but um, just depends. Yeah, I'm I'm full on wade. Like I same as you, here. I could stand there for an hour and be like, oh, I, I guess I should swim. I did come here to do that. Um, <laughs> do you guys ever use like training equipment in the open water? Like, do you use paddles or pool buoys, kickboards in the open water? How do you use that? I find things like icebergs or a piece of wood. I've used them as a kickboard, but other than that, uh, not too much. That's awesome. Um, Sarah, do you use anything? You know, I used paddles for the very first time, um, like last week in open water. Um, I, and that was the first time I've ever done that. So I don't do it very often. It was fun. It was a good time. There was a headwind and I had my paddles on and I was like, yeah, I'm <laughs> strong. But um, otherwise, that was my first time, surprisingly, because I love paddles. Um, I use them in the pool all the time, but I don't know why I've never thought to use them in open water. And I hate fins. They're not my jam. So <laughs> I only put those on if I'm being tortured. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right, what, do you guys have a favorite sunscreen or how do you protect yourself from the sun on these long swims? I use Desitin and it is sticky and smells terrible, but that's what I use. <laughs> Same thing, Sarah? Yep, and the picture you sent out, that's all, all Desitin. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst smelling thing in the world. Jamie and I have talked about that before. She has a certain brand, I think, that she prefers maybe. I don't know. <laughs> No, I do the max strength desitin. Yeah. Um, one thing, I haven't tried this out yet, but um, Edie in Hong Kong, she uh, claims that she puts um, a drop of, uh, I think, essential oils into the desitin, and that makes it smell better. I haven't tested it, but for anyone on the, uh, the line who really hates that unique scent, uh, that might be an option to explore. <laughs> So again, I have to shout out Abby just because I swim with her more than anyone else. Uh, but Abby put me on to Neutrogena Free and Clear Baby. And it doesn't smell super horrible, but it sticks on you like you would not believe. So I do that um, with a little bit of desitin, but I use, I don't use the purple max strength. I use the blue one. So it's like not as crazy. Um, how often do you guys feed? Is it every 30? every 30 minutes for everyone? Yeah, every 30. Yeah. What do you guys, what would you consider a swim that you wouldn't bring a feed on? Like, I don't always bring a feed on a swim that's two hours or under. 
I get hypoglycemic. I get crashy. Um, so I have to have something on me if I'm swimming more than an hour, just because if I don't, I, I'll get, I get shaky. I've always been like that though. So like, that's just hypoglycemia. I just have to, I just have to have um, calories when I'm swimming. Cool. If I need to, I can go up to about four hours without anything. It's not ideal, but I go two and a half, three hours really routinely without anything, um, and it's fine. So I can make it, I can usually make it four. Um, if I have to go longer than four, I'll die. <laughs> but up to, up to four is good. Jamie? I don't know. I'm like, I, I guess I just wouldn't feed on a swim that doesn't allow it. Like, for example, we can't feed um, during an ice mile that's specifically not allowed. Um, I think even in my Strait of Magellan, that was a 5K, I actually. I don't remember if I stopped to feed, but I would, I, one thing I never really eat or drink if I'm in the pool. So even if it's a few hours in the pool, um, I'll go longer without feeding than in open water. Not sure why. Huh. Cam, so Cam Bellamy has been brought up a few times. Him and I, two summers ago, did a few like six hour training sessions, long course in the pool. It's a lot of flip turns. Um, thank goodness it was long course. But yeah, we had the whole deck was covered in our like gels and goos and waters. And it was great. Um, what is your security blanket on your swim? Like what's something that just makes you feel, for me, it's my watch, but I can't wear it. So I guess I swim without my security blanket. <laughs> Hannah, I think you asked this question. So you've got to- oh, well, I'll answer it. Um, for me, it's my team. Um, I have a, I've built a super strong team and, uh, my crew chief is the most amazing woman ever. I don't have to say anything. She just, she like reads my mind. Um, I was in the ER Monday, Tuesday of this week. Um, and she called me, I was like in tears, like losing my mind, like thinking I'm going to have to cancel my, I had, got a stingray wound. And it got infected, so my foot turned purple. So I was in the, I went to four ERs this week, <laughs> earlier this week. I just got back in the water today. It was crazy. But so she called me and she was like, okay, what do I need to do? Where are you? What hospital are you at? What do you need? I'm on my computer right now. Like, how do I log into your insurance? Like, how do I figure this out? Like, we're figuring this out together. We're figuring it out right now. And I had a lot of people like, Abby was texting me and like, you know, friends were texting me, Kat, you know, I was talking to you. Um, a lot of people reached out, but the fact that Sylvia picked up the phone and called me when I was literally at my worst moment is she just knows and was like, I'm going to figure, I'm in San Francisco right now and I'm going to figure this out for you. Like I, Sylvia LeCook is like, she's my, she's my person. And I, I don't ever want to do a milestone marathon swim without her. Can you tell I love her? <laughs> I'm a passionate person, guys. <laughs> She's awesome. I concur fully. <laughs> Sorry. Also, my security blanket wants to come and say hi to everybody. No. Mine's oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. You can get down now. <laughs> What's her name, Hannah? Her name's Lucy. I have oh, a Lucy. Lucy. Yeah, she's a uh, <laughs> 20 pounds. I'm 6'4 and like 260 pounds, and she's very small and like 20 pounds of thickness. But she, whenever I'm on a Zoom, she has to like come and say hi to everybody. So, hello. <laughs> she swims too. Do you guys have a security blanket or something that you need to have on your swim, whether it's a person or an object or a feed? I mean, I enjoy having my husband with me. Um, I cried for like two or three hours when I was swimming Lake Champlain because he was like a hundred yards ahead and I couldn't see him anymore. <laughs> so I guess he's my security blanket, um, but I'm capable without him. I just appreciate having him around. He's a lot nicer. <laughs> Sarah, what was like the most comforting thing for you? Like, I mean, obviously like your four-way English channel was like the most amazing thing ever. Like what, was there one specific thing that you kind of, looked forward to every hour, every couple hours that like kept you going? Like, was there anything in particular or was it just like, I'm going to do this? It was just swimming. I know that's so boring, but yeah, just swimming. Um, I really enjoy pace swimmers. So, you know, I guess definitely looking forward to when a pace swimmer could jump in with me again. 
Um, I had three really good marathon swimmers on the boat with me, um, all triple crown swimmers, um, I think all ice mile swimmers, you know, so they were good swimmers. And I think between the three of them, they probably um, did at least an English channel <laughs> um, as a relay. So, you know, pace swimmers are essential. Um, but otherwise, you know, I don't know, it's just kind of, I don't know, I look at it like I'm going to work, you know, you just get into your routine and you do what you got to do. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, I'd say staying with my partner. It's always amazing. I do get that question a lot. Like, could I do a swim without him? Which I always wonder if a, if a male swimmer gets asked that about their partner as well. But uh, it's always interesting. But yeah, I'm very regimented. I like, you know, I think with some of the different conditions that we can see, um, you know, in marathon swimming, I almost like everything to be the same in, in terms of what I can control. I wear the same swimsuit for marathon swimming, just different varieties. Um, same sunscreen process, same cap, same goggles, same earplugs. I do, you know, I think people, some people really enjoy like peanut butter sandwiches and all sorts of solid food. I just love to feed on Carbro Pro every 30 minutes. Maybe a gel is like a big treat. So just kind of keeping all those things consistent is my security blanket. And then, you know, it helps me feel more prepared for anything that can come up in terms of conditions or, you know, currents or, you know, anything that may happen. Yeah. Do any of you four have any other questions for each other, you know, as we just wrap this up real quick? I think you asked all my questions. I did. <laughs> uh, I could ask questions all day, but I see we have four minutes. So I think uh, I'll pause there. <laughs> no, I, th I think we can, you know, wrap it up. And um, I just want to say, you know, at one point, I think there were 64 people on this call and I'm probably going to hang this call up and have tears in my eyes um, just because I'm, I feel so full right now. And I know that's like kind of cheesy to say, but like, this is beautiful that I put this out on Instagram and I just told Hannah, I thought 10 people would be on it. And there's 64 people watching this and like participating in the chat and like feeling like empowered by everything that you guys are saying. Um, and I don't know. I just, I love that this tiny little space was created for us all on a Thursday night. Um, so thank you everyone so, so, so much. Um, I think we'll, we'll download this and then everyone can share it um, however they'd like. Um, and I don't know, maybe we'll do another one, but yeah, I guess I don't have anything else to say. So thank you guys. Thank you, Kat. This was amazing. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. This was awesome. Thank you. Oh, wait. I have well to done. stop this, right? Yeah. I, well, I can end it. I was just.